Thank you, Carola, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, um, could I thank Professor McElnay for his warm welcome, and uh, Professor Dillenberger and her team for inviting me to speak uh, at this third annual Court Conference in such a historic venue. Sir William Whitler uh, was a politician. Um, in Northern Ireland, he'd also been known as a double jobber because he was a politician and a doctor. Um, but he, he, he worked at the core of the health service delivery here in the city of Belfast. And almost a century on, my responsibility as a Minister for Health, Social Services and Public Safety is to try and ensure that people like Sir William and their health care colleagues have the means to continue their vital roles to improve the health and social well-being of the people of Northern Ireland. All those years ago, autism wasn't something um, that was heard of. It is quite recent, and I think it is absolutely superb that we can have a conference with speakers uh, of the quality that is here today um, to help us to learn more about this condition, um, how we respond to it, and how we can make life better uh, for both those who suffer from it and uh, their families and carers. Today we are concentrating on the health and well-being of people with autism and their, and their families and carers, and I am keenly aware that people living with autism and their families rarely need the services of, of one department or a public service organisation. They, they, they often need uh, multiple uh, services at one time. And that is where the Autism Act of 2011 helps to focus our attention. The Act required, by, by, uh, my, or that, sorry, the Act required my department to lead on the development of a new cross-departmental autism strategy uh, with the other executive departments. And that work began in the autumn of 2011 and has culminated in the development of a draft Northern Ireland strategy and action plan, which I and my colleagues anticipate will be finalised and published before the end of this year. The successful development of the strategy and action plan can be attributed to the effective work of the multi-agency, multidisciplinary project board. From the very earliest stages of development, the project board engaged and ensured the involvement of those affected by autism, as well as representatives from each government department, health and social care organisations and the community and voluntary sector. There were also a number of pre-consultation events in which people were encouraged to highlight personal and local concerns about services or gaps in provision and to indicate those issues they considered necessary to have addressed in the autism strategy. Such involvement was crucial and this continued when the draft strategy and action plan were issued for formal consultation. The consultation events were well attended, and these, along with questionnaire responses and submissions from a range of organisations, offered the opportunity for those closest to autism to comment on the draft. It has been our aim to incorporate as many of those points as possible. The strategy is presently being updated and revised to reflect the very wide range of comments and suggestions on the draft. And I know that you will agree and acknowledge that the changes envisaged in the autism strategy and the initial three-year action plan can only be achieved through the continuing commitment of government departments and other statutory bodies working alongside with people with autism, their parents and carers, and the community and voluntary sector. There are 11 key themes within the autism strategy with associated strategic priorities. One important theme relates to raising an awareness and understanding about autism, especially in the public and private sector bodies whose job it is to provide services, but also in society at large. Essentially, the emphasis, how we all have a contribution to make in supporting people with autism, their families and carers, so that they can be full participants in their local communities and in the wider society. Today's conference programme, I note, will focus on the issue of awareness. You will also address some of the other central themes of the autism strategy, such as transitions, children and young people, 
education and health and well-being. So it encourages me, therefore, that we are all concerned about moving forward on the same key issues in relation to helping people living with autism and their families at every stage here in Northern Ireland. And looking forward, my executive colleagues and I intend uh, to all work harder at putting in place arrangements, and by this I mean the commissioning, development and delivery of services, so that we can collectively maximise the potential participation and inclusion of people living with autism throughout their lives, and at the same time provide support and encouragement um, to their families. On this note, I would like to wish you every success for an enjoyable day and a very productive conference uh, where we all increase our learning. Thank you very much.